This is the end of the beginning. Welcome to today's show. Well, everybody's aware of what's going on with the climate. I mean, with the weather. I mean, with the controlled destruction of our atmosphere, which is being done on purpose, of course. Everybody could see it around them, and everybody's obviously breathing in formaldehyde and benzene, which they're actually openly telling us we're all breathing in because apparently that's what happens when there's forest fires and then the sun hits them. We just breathe in things that could kill you potentially. But you're all probably saying to yourselves, huh, and you probably have thought about it maybe a few times. I know I have. What do wind, does wind usually blow from north to south, which would actually be called a north wind, not a south wind, which is just sums up this entire world we're living in the upside down right wouldn't you call it a south wind if the wind was blowing south no they call it a north wind but conveniently the wind is just blowing and swarming all across america but isn't there this thing called the jet stream right we always hear about this thing called the jet stream right everything follows the jet stream right we saw the wildfire in california a few years ago and the smoke went across america and nasa was nice enough to tell us about why it was happening that way, how the smoke was getting caught up in the jet stream. So you're probably saying, well, yeah, the jet stream doesn't normally blow from eastern Canada towards western Central America and then back across. But hey, they have an excuse for it because why wouldn't they already have an excuse? Because they don't want you to think. So there's something there in place already for the zombies out there. And that's that the Canadian wildfires could be tied to wavy, blocky jet stream. The jet stream has been disrupted, apparently. That's what they're telling everyone. Now, I'll get into more detail in one second. I have to tell you a funny story real quick. I've been mentioning about some of these uh, things that get promoted, like how all these serial killers are CIA operatives, et cetera. Now it's becoming this big popular thing. And I did a video on the Unabomber, right? So I've been getting recommended all these videos now since I did a video on the Unabomber and I took some clips. And that was obviously on... Um, someone else's channel who I uploaded on because that channel doesn't exist anymore and I'm a new YouTuber. So anyway, I get promoted these videos. I'm sure you all know, like when you look at certain videos, the algorithm promotes stuff. So I've been getting promoted all these like true crime type videos. And sometimes recently I've been clicking on them because if there's something in it and I'm like, what is this? Is this something, you know, if there's like one that has sat satanic symbols in the thumbnail, I'll check it out and see if it's worth even covering in a video, if it's new or if it's old, et cetera. And there was one on this guy and I clicked on it. It just looked interesting to me because it was it's a cannibal. So I was like, all right, maybe this is something I should know about. Let's see if he's connected to the cult. Maybe I'll cover it so kids out there can see the connection between the occult and cannibalism and all the stuff that I t cover. Anyway, long story short, I watch it, right? This guy who's like pretty much a lunatic ends up going into someone's garage. A couple was watching a TV in the garage. You might have heard this story. He goes in there and he kills them and he eats them. He starts eating their faces. So they call them like a cannibal thing, et cetera, et cetera. So he murders these two innocent people. And as I'm watching the video, I'm just like, this is just disturbing and sick. They find out there's no drugs in the system. He's just pretty much out of his mind. Of course, he gets, uh, you know, let out. He's put in a mental institution only for six months and is going to be am walking amongst us again very shortly. But the irony of it all is the clips that were in there, I'm like, how do they have these video clips of this guy? He's like talking, he's singing, he's just, you know, completely like most of the zombies in today's society. And it turns out he's got a YouTube channel. So I was like, wow, he's got a YouTube channel. Well, I got, you know, I, I, what is it? Because they showed the, they showed his, uh, you know, screenshot of his page. So I looked up his channel and it's still there on YouTube. Go figure, right? The guy ate two people or he, he was biting them. They found flesh in his teeth from eating their faces. But his YouTube channel has not been terminated. So it's good to know where YouTube stands as far as influencers. Because these are the things that they claim they're giving strikes for now. Influencing and people, uh, you know, that are dangerous and a threat and bullying, all this type of stuff. But don't worry about it. If you eat somebody's face, YouTube will not delete your YouTube channel. So his channel is still up, long story short. But in the event that this channel goes, I want everyone out there to know I have a new channel. I've been mentioning it. I have to mention it now. I want to get started quick on it so that it could be ready. That, so that, that way I can constantly upload and don't have to worry about days or weeks between videos and only uploading the website for the people who can't join the website. So my channel is linked below. It's called Eye for an Eye. That doesn't mean it's the name I'm using. It just is a name that I came up. I mean, obviously it's biblical, but uh, it's just a name I just threw out there. I usually just put a name sometimes and then I'll change the name, but that's the channel. Make sure you sub now. I'll be reading scripture. I'll be doing some other things like talking about maybe not crayons, maybe magic markers. I don't know, but I have to get to 4,000 watch hours and I have to get it to a thousand subs. I think I have a thousand subs now, but please just make sure you sub to it. Let's get into the video. Sorry about the rant. I just thought it was hilarious that 
all the stuff with YouTube. And it's not just me. Obviously, there's tons of people who have been thrown off the platform. But don't worry about it. Some guys convict, uh, some guy eats two people, two innocent people who were just retired and were going to spend their twilight of their life together in love, had kids. Don't worry about it. Somebody just eats their face. Don't worry, we won't delete their YouTube channel and we'll leave up their insane videos as well so other people could see it and they could become insane too. So that's really just the irony of it all, right? Or the uh, hypocrisy or just the stupidity of it all. So I was thinking a lot about the stuff going on with the wildfires and I was talking to myself sitting there saying, this is interesting, I'm not a meteorologist, but it's kind of weird that the wind is coming down because we're told and we've been told with these wildfires that it follows the jet stream, right? That's what they always tell us. Oh, well, fire in California, and now it's all the way across the Midwest. Oh, well, that's because the jet stream, right? And we're supposed to just nod and go, oh, okay. And NASA, of course, tells us this stuff. So seeing that a lot of the fires were actually in Quebec, you could see uh, the map on the screen where I'm showing you the fires and where they're supposedly happening. And of course, this is all deliberately done. And somehow this is spreading all the way over to Spain. They're telling us that the reason that the wind is blowing all the way up there, all the way west, which means it's a western wind that's then going down, western south wind, which they call, again, a north wind, going down into America. Then it's getting caught up in a jet stream, apparently, that would take it all the way out to Spain. But they're telling us that the jet stream's all messed up. Isn't that convenient? That's the jet stream, the thing that they try to use all the time to tell us this is how science works, et cetera, et cetera. The jet stream is wavy and blocky thanks to climate change. So don't worry about the odd things going on with the weather. Don't be suspicious about it. It's climate change, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, unbelievable. How convenient. So they say scientists say a closely watched atmospheric pattern, the jet stream is behind both the Canadian wildfires and the scorching heat in Texas, raising questions about how it shapes extreme weather events and whether climate change is disrupting its flow. And by the way, the extreme heat in Texas, these are not, this extreme heat would be 150 degrees, okay? Texas every summer at the end of June and July is 100 degrees. So being 105 in Texas, 100 to 10, it's not that big of a difference, right? Now, I would think that the, you know, Death Valley is a place where it's like 100, it could hit like 125, 130 degrees. If Death Valley hits 200 degrees, maybe I'll be a little bit suspicious about what's going on. But they just constantly tie this stuff in because, remember, they want to talk about how climate change is warming the earth. They don't want to talk about how the East Coast has been in the 60s all June, right? We're talking Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. It's been in the 60s and low 70s in June and July. For those who have never been in the East Coast, it's usually in the 80s by June 1st. By Memorial Day, it's usually consistently in the 80s and 90s. So 20 to 30 degrees below, no, don't want to talk about that, but they want to talk about it being hot in Texas where it's always hot because this is this the manipulation they use. And of course, the self-created, self-started fires, they, which they won't admit to, they blame it on the climate. Why? Because they can blame it on the boogeyman. So the jet stream, a ribbon of air that encircles the Northern Hemisphere at high altitudes, drives pressure changes that determine weather across North America. The jet stream's wavy pattern creates areas of high and low pressure. In recent months, the jet stream's patterns trapped and stalled a ridge of high pressure over Northern Canada. So nobody's heard about this until now, right? Because we just had this entire thing a couple of weeks ago where the skies were orange and they're blaming on the Canadian fires. And people probably, the second time around here, the first time people probably didn't ask any questions. They were just like, oh, you know, now people are like, wait, there's another one. It's happening again. And they're going, yeah, it's happening again. And people are starting to look into it a little bit more because they're getting suspicious because now we're seeing a pattern here, right? And when you see a pattern, you should be suspicious. And people are going, why would it blow down this way? At least people like me are. Why would it come down here? The jet stream wouldn't bring it down, would it? I mean, Quebec is to the east, so there's no way that it should be hitting Illinois and Chicago like the videos that we saw, right? Or even if it's in... Uh, you know, other parts of Canada, which it is, but still, right? So they're coming out now, now conveniently. They're saying, well, in recent months, the jet stream's patterns trapped and stalled a ridge of high pressure over northern Canada, which caused a heat wave and primed the landscape for the wildfires that later sent smoke pouring into the Midwest and eastern U.S. earlier this month. Another ridge of high pressure centered over Texas, sending temperatures soaring. More than 100 people, million people, excuse me, 100 million people in the U.S. faced either blistering heat or unhealthy air quality. How convenient. You know, formaldehyde. Yeah, that's great. No one's worried about that, right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Same people behind this. Same people who say they want to block the sun. Same people who tell you you need to put something in your... I mean, 
Amazing. But anyway, in recent weeks, the jet streams appeared unusual and disjointed, scientists say. Some researchers think climate change is disrupting its flow and causing it to bake regions and heat longer. And again, I want to just reiterate, I blank out the word climate. You know what? Uh, in the articles, because the algorithm picks it up and then they put their ridiculous wiki thing, which is comical for anyone that wants comedy relief, underneath all the videos so that they could try to debunk any video or make sure every single video is telling you the answer they want out there about climate change, not about HARP or anything else. And I did upload a video from the show Sightings about HARP that I wanted to put here, but I put it up on the website so people could see it. So check it out if you're on the website and obviously consider joining the website if you haven't. But back to this. So... <laughs> In recent weeks, the jet stream has appeared unusual, conveniently, of course. Michael Mann, a climate scientist at Penn State, at Pennsylvania State University, likened visualizations of the jet stream's appearance in recent weeks to a swirling brushstrokes of a post-impressionist painter. So that's them saying it looks like Van Gogh. <laughs> so, because just, I mean, look how convenient all this stuff is. So when suspicious weather arises, they don't want you thinking about P Operation Popeye. They don't want you thinking about... Harp. They don't want you thinking about CERN. They don't want you thinking about 5G. They don't want to think about any of this stuff because they know what's out there. They want you to already have this answer. So if you search about the jet stream, if you search about why the winds are blowing south, well, they already have the answer for you. Oh, the jet stream's all messed up. So what are we going to see tomorrow? Are all of a sudden our hurricanes going to start forming in Canada and coming down through the US? Because obviously we always see the same pattern, right? They come out from the sea, they hit the south, they hit, you know, uh, Florida, they'll hit Louisiana, they'll hit Texas, they'll come up and they'll go to the right and they'll go off to sea, right? Sometimes they'll hit the East Coast, they'll hit North Carolina, so, right? Are we suddenly going to see that? Are we going to see blizzards? Are we going to see all this stuff? Probably, right? But now they have an excuse for it because the jet stream's all messed up. It's a Van Gogh painting all of a sudden. So now they can just start pumping this propaganda out there for any mysterious weather. Without mentioning the fact that there's like 75 tornadoes a day. There's tornadoes forming in places where they shouldn't be forming because there's a lot of trees. Like tornadoes don't normally form in mountainous areas. But they're happening now and nobody's suspicious about it. Right? Just like nobody's suspicious about the rise of autism and the rise of diseases and the fact that men can't make babies with women anymore because everybody's infertile. Nobody's suspicious of any of it. And they have the answer every single time, even though we could tell by how our government treats us and how they divide us every day in the news that they hate us. They openly talk about how we need to get the population number down, but nobody's suspicious. Of course not, because they're too busy on their phones. So the Van Gogh painting which is the uh, new climate jet stream, affected, of course, are made and created by climate change. Not by them, not by anybody else. If you think that, you're a conspiracy nut job and you need to be censored and you need to be stopped. Okay, so they say they see more persistent weather patterns and persistence translates to higher impacts. Once the heat wave gets established over land and the land heats up, that's, that's warm air that causes the atmosphere to bulge. There's a positive feedback loop that contributes to the persistence and intensity of the heat wave. So... Our entire lives, we've had this uh, jet stream that they constantly show us and the storms and all this stuff. But now, of course, conveniently, when you start questioning what's going on with the weather, well, they have an answer in place. They say climate change. But then you say, well, climate change wouldn't explain why the winds are going down this. Oh, it does. Because now, because of climate change, too, the jet streams are a Van Gogh painting. They're just a sloppy thing. And anything can happen at any time in any direction that's never happened in the history of humanity before. Okay. And we're supposed to nod and just say yes. Right? That's what they want us to do. Just nod, say yes, and don't ask questions. So this is the latest prop that's out there, and I'm sure we're, this is just the beginning of it. Now, this article I'm reading from is from NBC News directly, so you'll hear more and more about this with more bizarre weather, about how the jet stream is no longer consistent because they're going to just start hitting areas that they want to hit with storms that would never, ever hit there before. Ever, Right? You're going to see tsunamis. You're going to see all types of weather that's never... And it's, they're going to just say, okay, well, that has nothing to do with the climate, but now it has to do with the jet stream. So don't worry about why torn, you know, hurricanes are popping up in places they never would and going in directions they'd never go in because they're deliberately creating these things. And they have the technology to do it. And all you have to do is look at CIA documents, government documents where they've talked about this stuff. You can even go back and look at some of the stuff I've done over the years. I mean, another YouTuber did over the years. With Disney even showing about creating storms, controlling weather patterns, et cetera, et cetera. All in front of our faces. Yeah, nobody wants to believe that these people are wicked enough to do it. And I'll say this, if you're still listening, hope you are. I'll probably do a video on this topic, but I always say, like, people don't believe that there's people who are wicked enough to do this, right? 
Yeah, when people see these things, like I mentioned earlier, these true crime type stories, or they watch these serial killer things like on Dahmer and Bundy and stuff, they look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, that guy's so sick, right? Like, oh, that guy's so sick. Can you believe how sick he is? Wow, there's some sick people in the world. Or any other of the stories that you hear, these true crime stories, like the guy Watts with the kids and the wife, right? You see that and it's just, it's heartbreaking, it's grotesque. Some of it's obviously, these people are Manchurian candidates, but anyway. Your mindset, when you see that, you believe it, and you're like, I can't believe it. These people are really sick. They're so sick people. Well, just realize that all the people in politics, all the people, the world leaders, imagine it was like, in your mind, it was Dahmer running, you know, Canada, and Bundy running America, and whoever else, right, running Ukraine and Russia, you know, uh, the clown, John Wayne Gacy, who I've covered before. All these people, imagine them being presidents and prime ministers of countries. Then people will be like, oh my gosh, we have these really sick people running the country. We shouldn't let them run the country. Well, that's what these people are who are running the world, Gates and all them. They're as sick as those people, if not sicker. And they're probably all part of the same fraternal brotherhood. So for people out there who have a tough time thinking, well, they would never do that. Why would they do that? Well, if you know they have the technology to do it, then what, what's the hard part to get past? The fact that these people couldn't be that sick? Why? Because they present themselves as nice people on TV? Well, all the serial killers presented themselves as nice people. That's how they got away with it for so long. Oh, he was a nice guy. He was a, had a great personality. He was charming, Ted Bundy, et cetera, right? Well, look at these actors on TV. Same thing. And this is what they're doing in humanity. They're doing it through these means that they have, whether it's weather manipulation, whether it's the towers that we know, the 6G, 5G, et cetera, everything possible. Yeah, nobody believes there's anybody wicked enough to do it, but they believe all these Manchurian candidate stories about Manson, et cetera. So, unbelievable. The jet streams have now changed, so don't worry. There's no, there's no order anymore. There's no rules anymore. They'll just come up with whatever story they want to convince you of whatever they're doing with the climate, convince you that we need to stop the climate change. So the next thing they'll convince everyone of is that we need to block the sun. Don't worry about food and crops. We need to block the sun. We need to block the sun. We need to get you in electric vehicles. Oh, wait, don't we need to run the electric vehicles? Don't we need the sun for solar power? and stuff? Oh, crap. We're all stranded and we're all under their control. Yep, that's how it's going to work. I thank you for being here. I hope you're all doing well. Make sure you sub to my other channel if you haven't yet. God bless all of you and your families.